I am so excited to be bringing to you my latest book. I'm calling it Think on These Things. In his new book, Bishop Allen has put together a collection of power thoughts, insights, perspectives, and practical applicable wisdom drawn from his exciting years of experience. Inside the book, you will find deep insights on the power of purpose, integrity, self-leadership, excellence, the power of the mind, among others. So welcome to Woman Without Limits. My name is Reverend Kathy Kuna, and I'm here to tell you, whatever has limited you has to stop. And guess what you have to do? Get out of your own way. Not even the devil can stop you. Only you can stop yourself. So today I'm declaring, get out of your way and allow God to make you become who he created you to become. You are a woman without limits. That means you can be anything and anyone on earth. We bring you amazing people to come and share with us their story so that you know that your story too can turn around. And today we have an amazing powerhouse. This is a woman that is sought after all over the world. And I thank God for bringing us together that I can be able to even host her on Woman Without Limits. What a privilege. She is a force to reckon with. The whole world has opened up for her. And I thank God for her. Tonight, I know you will understand why I'm telling you this. Would you welcome with me on set, Reverend Funke Felix Adijumo. Thank you so very much. You are so beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Reverend thank Kathy, you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You. Now, you are very fine woman. Like you, you look so beautiful. And I cannot even believe you're a grandmother of how many? Seven. How did you keep yourself looking this year? <laughs> woman of God. Thank you so very much. <laughs> um, you just have to understand that when God created you as a woman, it wasn't because he didn't know what next to do. He created you with a purpose at the back of his mind. So once you understand that you are not an afterthought, you'll give yourself peace of mind. Amen. Rest of mind. Mm. You're not competing with anybody. Nobody's competing with you. You wake up. You like yourself. Come you on. You look at yourself in the mirror. You say, wow, God, you spent extra time when you were creating me. Hello. You choose to be happy. Hey. Once in a while, you pop the wine. Yes. And you say, I just want to celebrate myself. Mm. I don't have any regiments. I just choose to be happy no matter what life brings. Right. That's beautiful. You look amazing. Now, your life started on a conflict, conflicting note. Like your parents thought you were going to be a son. And you came out a, a, a woman. How was that? The conflicting uh, start? Very bad. Very, very bad. But I thank God for my father. He already had two girls. They died. And then he had me. So his relations gathered and they began to weep on the day I was born. January 28th. They wept, not by faith or in a dream. Right. They were crying. Joshua, again, what will she ever become? 
when it was now time for me to go to school, they counseled with him, don't send her to school because she's going to get pregnant. And even if she doesn't get pregnant, you school her, she is going to change her name because she will be married. It will be a total waste of your resources. Mm. Don't send her to school. And my father refused. He said he looked at them as undertakers that wanted to bury his vision. Mm. My maiden name in my language means my news goes round the world. What's your maiden name? Ehemekaye. Ehemekaye. My news Whoa. goes round the world. So my father said something told him that this is the baby that will bring meaning to that name. Mm. He decided to send me to school. When he now decided to send me to school, his relations that were not believers decided to afflict my brother, the one that was born after me. So he became ill. My father took both of us to the village. Somehow, somehow, somebody rubbed something on his head. My father said each time somebody wanted to carry me, I said, no, 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 don't carry me. I said to him, now I know the Lord's servant is anointed. But my brother was everybody's lover and friend. They carried him. He became ill. So we had to cut short the family visit, came back, and for six solid years, my brother was ill. So my father started selling all the properties. I was young, but I knew, because he wanted to build a house. He sold everything. It got so bad, we were eating from our hands. My mother would put pounded yam on the hand, put the steel, and I'll be eating, because we had sold everything. The day my father sold the last item, my brother died. It was a Sunday, I remember, about 3 p.m. Some pastors were in the house praying, praying, but he died. So we became poor just so that I would not be able to go to school. What? You know what my father did? He used to work for the Federal Ministry of Agri. He approached his boss and sent to, said to the man, I want to retire voluntarily. The man said, why? He said, my daughter just gained admission to secondary school. I don't have the funds. I want to retire, collect my graduate so I can send her to school. Hmm. The man said, you must be mad. Did you say a girl? If you had said a boy, I would have understood a yes. girl. You want to retire? No way. Get out of my office. My father stood his ground, retired, collected his graduate, paid for my school fees for a few years, sent me to school. Two weeks after he paid my school fees and I resumed, his boss called him back and said, you inspired me. Wow. Take back your job, but wow. no more gratuity. Wow. My father looked at me later in life. I have this on video. My father said to me, you are better than gratuity. Oh. And you are better than seven sons. Eish. Just like Elkanah. And when I, when I got to school, I became, God blessed me. Mm. Very brilliant. I became the head girl of the school. Came out in flying colors and really took care of my father. Really took care. Because I, I was going to ask you, like, how was your teenage and, you know, in, in growing up and all that? It was tough. It was tough? Tough. Mm -hmm. I was physically abused. I'm glad it wasn't sexual because I'm not sure I'll be able to have recovered. But I was thoroughly physically abused by who i don't really like to say it because it was a relation but it was bad with a capital b it was bad and the person kept telling me that i could never amount to anything what because i had to live with her but i could never amount to anything right but my father kept telling me you are better than seven sons you yeah. are better than seven sons he will hold my hand and teach me how to write you know those exercise books that had yeah. lies. They would say, look, the people that manufactured these exercise books, they didn't manufacture the line or put the lines there for mistake. Write. Reverend Kathy, I have one of the best handwritings in the world. Wow. Courtesy of my father. Really? He was a Baptist, you know, member, mm. an elder mm. committed. He believed in me. He kept pouring it into my system that I would be great. I would be great. Oh, Wow. I loved him. God just raised him as my angel. Right. So I made up my mind that I was going to push until yeah. I succeed. Right. So it was against all odds. Everything all was odds. against you. All odds. Everything wow. was wow. against me.
Then I had my second child. I was at the hospital. She had in the same room with one woman. She also had a girl. I had a girl. And she didn't know I was in the nursery breastfeeding my baby. She walked in and went to her baby's cot. Those days, the babies were separated from the mothers. I don't know what, how you do it here. So she went to the baby's cot and said to the baby, and I had her. She didn't know I was in one corner there. If you were a boy, your father would have loved you. But I love you. Welcome. You won't believe this. Few hours after we were back in the room, and this man shows up. Apparently, that was a husband carrying one baby. I'm sure that, that's their first child. And this one was the second. This girl that was being, this baby that was in carried was a girl. He put the baby on his neck, came into our room, opened the door, stood by the door, and said to the woman, What did you born? As I slept, late on my bed, I felt like replying him and telling him, A hey, child. Or did you born? And the woman scratched her head and said, A girl, this is the altar of God. I am not lying. This happened. I was there. The man turned and said, I am off to the stadium. The woman started bleeding. I jumped up because nurses came in and they were using the bowl. I don't know what to call it, that bedpan, to take blood. It was gushing. I walked, stood up and I said to the woman, you kill yourself and the man will be married in three months. Don't be stupid. Which one can you create? And this is what the society has done to the woman. It's not a written law where all of us know what I'm talking about. Come here, come here. It's for boys. That course is for boys. Come, come, come. Don't join the boys. Come, come, come. Excuse me, who is speaking and you are speaking? Boys are speaking here. This generation needs to do something about it because it may be a time bomb. Organizations put pressure on the, on the helper. She was created to be a helper. And this she does. She's, she's cooking. She's doing this. She's running runs. She's doing school runs. She's doing that and that. And some of them are still being abused. I told you I have an orphanage. That means some of these helpers died while they were trying to give life to their babies. Some of the helpers that we're talking about in this convention, and I'm talking about women, married, single, divorced, whatever, have become handicapped socially. Deformed, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, financially, and what have you. Mm. I have a home for women that are in abusive relationships where they can come. One of the women, you won't believe this, this 21st century said anytime there was a misunderstanding in the marriage, the man will say to her, come here you stupid goat. Kneel down. Raise your two hands up. Face the wall. Marriage. True life story. After 15 minutes. With three kids. Stand up. You pig. Go to the kitchen. Fix something for me. And when you are done, clean up and meet me in the room. So our criminologist asked, so why are you in that relationship? She said, I don't know of anything. Where will I go? don't have anything. Woman, from this convention, you must have something. You must have something. Your father did not send you to the university to be a full-time housewife. Even if you are a full-time housewife, work from home. Have 1,000 shillings that you can call your own that you can give to God, that you can use to honor us, or that you can use to help somebody. No man should raise his daughters without pumping things like this into them. Don't get excited in church and then go back the same way you came. Use what it is that you've received here 
to make the necessary adjustments in your life. Make the necessary adjustments in your life. Because there are dimensions that God wants to take you. But unless you make the necessary adjustments in your life, you aren't going there. The, the, like the Bible says, the air remains like a slave. The air is the one that is supposed to walk in the fullness of everything. But he remains like a slave. And his inheritance is kept under custodians and stewards. They are not able to experience the fullness of everything that God has for them. Why? Because they are children. They are immature. They haven't walked into maturity. So there are certain things that God will withhold from you because you have refused to use the mirror to begin to make the necessary adjustments for your life did that not give you a low self-esteem like especially see when you're told uh, or you're pushed down and told you're useless it did yeah it was very bad it did mm. I felt very ugly I felt what very I mean you very with your ugly. beautiful cheekbones <laughs> that you Thank know you. I mean your cheekbones are like uh, created by God I felt very in a <laughs> very special way like you don't even have Thank your you. rouge is already done <laughs> <laughs> Thank you yeah and I remember I'll be envying my friends and my mates that had boyfriends and I'm saying I'm so ugly nobody I look like a boy look at me and my father kept telling me my father kept telling me that I was beautiful but Poverty added ugliness. So talk to me now. There was Poverty. a time, seven of us, my father, my mother, the si my siblings, we were living in one room, no window. What? I hugged till my head almost broke. Hmm. I hugged four times a day. We had to eat. Explain what that is. I had to carry stuff on my head. Hmm. If it wasn't fish, it would be corn. Be bread, it should be vegetables. Going well, this round. Is your beautiful hair. Yes, I still have the mark. Going round selling just so we could eat kerosene. I was almost raped twice mm. just because I was hawking as a little girl. Oh, hawking. So you were hawking as a little girl? Yes. You would go everywhere. Everywhere. I owe Jesus my life. Because when I look back, and I see how I escaped those oh. rape oh. situations. It's amazing to me. Mm. And I didn't have anybody to deliver me. I was hawking. Yeah. And men would say, come inside the room. Yeah. And I would flee. I didn't know how it happened. It couldn't have been by my power. It's just God, yeah. Just God preserving and protecting me. Right. So when I, I suffered terrible low self-esteem, mm. I didn't believe in myself. Mm. I was withdrawn. Everybody was fine except me. Hmm. And um, then when I turned 17, sorry, when I, when I was 14, hmm. I met the Lord Jesus Christ. He changed my life. Right. He turned my life around. It was at a, you know, my Baptist choir master. Mm -hmm. I needed a job. I just finished my school start and he invited me, took me to a place to get a job and I thought, he wanted to be funny with me when he told me to come to his house. Right. So I was ready. I had my short knicker and I had a dress on. And I left a word with my uncle's wife. In case someone calls to meet me up at the police station. Because I'm going to beat this man up today. <laughs> Reverend Kathy, in my life I've never fought with a woman. Except one pregnant woman that I beat. When, <laughs> when her baby came, I had to go and look to be sure the baby was not deformed. I have always fought with men all my life. Like fought, fought, physical, physical. fight. Physical. What are you saying? And they have beaten <laughs> hell out of me. <laughs> I will just sit in the class. Somebody, a male, will just slap me. I will see stars. <laughs> Your mouth was running the afternoon <laughs> when we were at the assembly. <laughs> ah, so because what? I was transferring aggression, um, I hated me. Right. And I vowed never to be married. What are you talking about? Never in my life to be married. Are you, in spite of your father trying to really. I can't explain that. You could not stand Vowed me. never to be married. Mm. 
Then I met Jesus. Right. Even after I met the Lord Jesus Christ, September 14, 1978, I didn't see any good marriage around me. So I said, it's not worth it. There's no point. No, no, no. no. Even my pastor's marriage. Mm. I said, no, 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 no. Mm. You know how pastors take care of everybody except but their, their wife. So I said, no, 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 I will never be married. And right. then God gave me an encounter and told me marriage is by faith, explained to me what happens on the wedding day, right. while the wife stands by the left hand, and the, this one is, you know. The then Lord I, walked with you that journey. And I vowed, I said, Lord, if you give me the privilege of being married, I will make a difference. I will be one of the best 5,000 wives in the world. What are you saying? In when you were how old now? When did you change your mind? I was and, 19. And, and, and tell me, when did you like start now getting back your self-esteem? Is it when you got saved? It was after I got saved. Right. And then when I met my husband. I was 19 when I met him. In church. There were 13 other suitors. Oh yes. That wanted you. Yes. My husband how was How did the you 14th. differentiate between those 13? Um, how did you... Eh? My husband was the 14th. Yes. As a Christian, not as an unbeliever. Right. Because I was the most active sister in the church. In fact, that was how I met my husband. I would go to church like one hour before the service to sweep. When I get to church, I will notice a man, a young man, on his knees. His shirt will be wet, intercede, wow. pray. And I will sweep around him. And I will say to myself, this man really has problems. <laughs> Why would you come to church? Every minute service, and then you pray. And pray till he it sweats. It was after we came together, I asked him, by the way, what were you praying about? He said, I was praying for my pastor. And I didn't know he would ever become a pastor. What? And my pastor did not treat him well. That's a story for another day. But he was praying, praying for him for until him. he sweats. And he still didn't treat Terribly. him well. Terribly. The shirt would be wet. And he didn't treat him well did not treat him well at all. That's another message for insecure leaders. Oh. It's terrible. Mm. So when I met him, yeah. he looked at me and said, you're so brilliant, you need to go back to the university. I said, no. I almost self-sponsored because when my father's, the money my father paid finished, I had to struggle. Then I went for another degree, but not university. I said, no, there's no way. He said, no, you can't. He was the one God used to possibilitize my mentality. He would tell me, you're beautiful. I said, no, I'm not beautiful. And all that and all that. You would actually say, no, you're not beautiful. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Because I Reverend am, Funke, are you talking about yourself? I'm talking about myself. The Reverend devil Kathy. is mad. I think when That's he hit bad. down from, he must have hit his head on the ground. <laughs> it was bad. You. It was You are bad. not finding yourself beautiful. At all. If you can put your destiny and your head on somebody, to so pastor, what is money? Too many people these days. I fear for the next generation. A generation that causes their father and mother. Things they cannot say when they meet the person. They go online because data is free. Between 7 p.m. and something they type. Be careful. Be careful. She's a cook. She's a dry cleaner. She's a servant. She's a daughter, she's a woman, she's a wife, she's a mother. So much pressure on the woman. So much. From the society. It is unspoken. When you meet someone, the person is proud. Even women, proud to tell you, I have four boys. I have four boys. I have three boys. You see the pride on their faces. When they have girls, they say, eh, it's girls I have. Even women. In case you are here and you don't have a daughter, you better go and adopt. Who will bury you when you die? Is it this man that hardly remember to call? So you have not, Gideon, you have not called. Sorry, mom, sorry, I'm on my way to Germany. And if you have only boys, you better pray that your boys should marry correct daughters, that they should not marry your enemies. Society puts so much pressure on the woman. The family puts so much pressure on the woman. The 
must be married at a certain age as if singleness is a crime. It is not. Enjoy where you are on your way to where you are going. If your mates are married, God comes late when he wants to come big. The society makes the woman feel that if you give birth to guests only, you have a problem. My biology, the last time I checked, my biology tells me that it is the man that determines the sex of the baby. So what are we talking about here? The church put so much pressure. I'm talking about the helper. And I'm going to conclude with help for the helper. Because too many helpers are in pain. We're talking about rest, restoration. We're talking about the inner man. Too many. I don't deal just with the physical. The church puts so much pressure on the woman. You must tie your scarf when you go to church. You must not wear this. You must not wear makeup. If you see my wedding picture, you will cry for my mother. <laughs> I got my, my dress from England, but those days, 35 years ago, 1984, my pastor's wife had to inspect it because in my church then, in our church then, no jewelry, no nothing. Because souls were perish. <laughs> so when my pastor's wife saw the, the wedding gown, she said to me, Sister Funke, you cannot wear these because souls are perishing. As if souls are still not perishing. <laughs> so she condemned that and made me one cocoa sack <laughs> wedding dress. Turtle neck. And gave me pneumonia scarf veil. No jewelry, no makeup, no powder on my wedding day. I say, have the picture in our house. Once in a while, I'll go there. I say, ah, Funke, the person that did you like this. church and the man is allowed to dress anyhow. Some of them even sag. When I see that sagging, I help them pull it down. If you want us to sit, so let's sit. So you go to the church and you see the, the, the women, the ladies at 45, they're not married. You see them in droves. No jewelry, nothing. I look at someone and say, if my brother should bring any of you to the house, I'll send him back. The society puts so much pressure on the helper. Anything is wrong is the woman. As you are going out to your husband's house, behave, take care of the mother. We raise the girls and we don't raise the boys. If we stop having women's conferences today, till Jesus comes, women will still behave. So much has been poured into the woman. But our men, nobody's talking to them. I believe I am one of the people that God has raised to speak to men. And I'm going to be speaking to you men tonight. Because everything just gets cancelled when the woman gets home. Because nobody's talking to the men. The corporate world put so much pressure on the woman. The helper. Help for the helper. So much pressure. As we speak, even in the US, in the United States of America, they are still talking about equal pay. What? I was reading on the plane yesterday on my way from Dubai, two days ago on my way from Dubai, about Saudi Arabia. That for the first time, a woman can now drive. What? Just because she's a woman. That now, a woman can obtain a passport without a male guardian. 21st century. Because God just raised the crown prince in Saudi Arabia. And he's turning everything. And I read that in the last one week... 1,000 women have gone to the immigration office in Saudi Arabia to collect their passports to travel on vacation for the first time. Thank God for such men. The society puts so much pressure on the woman as if it is a crime to be a woman. woman. 
So the first thing the enemy went for was the sense of value. And that's what he does. The robber steals your sense of value. The enemy wants you to believe that you're not valuable. I'm going somewhere with all this. The devil desires for the children of God to believe they are not valuable. He desires for you to believe you can never amount to anything. That's the devil's first desire. For you to believe that you're not valuable in the eyes of God. And that you can never get. And every time you think you're of no value. What is the first thing that you do? You doubt your creator. The minute you doubt your creator. You can never accomplish what he has in store for you. Because you believe you're not good enough. You're not valuable. And this is where a lot of people are. Believing that they are not valuable. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Most of the insecure women I've ever met in life, most of the ones who feel they are not beautiful are the most beautiful. How I'm terrible is this devil? Bad so devil. you would cry? Cry. I mean cry. Look at my life. I'm so ugly. Look at me. I look like this and all that. So little by little, little mm. by little, after I got born again, I met my husband. We caught up for about two years. I went back to the university, finished part one. And we got married. This same man that used to tell you you look nice, this prayer warrior in the church, became your husband. Became my husband. Ha! Became my life, my life jacket. That man, I cannot trade him for one billion dollars. God used him to walk me through the valley of the shadow of death. What? He's the one who started to lift you and tell you you're beautiful, you can go to university, you can do all that. He started to... When, that in him. when God called him into ministry, I said, never. I will never be a poor. Me? Pastor's wife? Past, God forbid. So I told him, because we needed to relocate. I said, go, you have become a weekend husband. I'll just stay at home. And I was staying at home. He went. Then one day I was reading a book on marriage. And I got a paragraph. If your husband comes home and tells you that he has been transferred to a more rural place. As a child of God, will you throw temper tantrums or you will submit to the will of God? I broke down in tears. My husband was not there. I broke down in tears. And when he returned that weekend, I was ready to go with him. Wow. I went back to that book until tomorrow I couldn't find that paragraph. What? It's not in the book. So it's the Holy Spirit that brought it to open your eyes. Because God speaks to me via reading. Till tomorrow, it is not in the book. So, my husband, what? when I was, when the ministry first started, yes. I couldn't preach. I didn't know how to preach. He would write a message, write point one, mm. point two, point three, point four, <laughs> give it to me, and I'll be looking at him in church while I'm preaching. I was too shy. No self esteem, no confidence. I'll be staring at him and preaching. See? He would do like this. What? What? <laughs> and today he can leave the church and I can preach. What are you Why saying? Why would I not honor him? What? What? I you, couldn't preach. You know, now when you give the story, it's like you're talking about somebody else. Because I'm looking at you and thinking, you? you are I, preaching machine? I couldn't face the crowd. I couldn't. You were too shy. The devil is mad. And too he had finished and your ear. He had finished yourself as him and made you feel you're not good enough to stand even before people. And I have I still have physical marks of the abuse on my body. It, as we speak. Are you by saying my hand? Are you saying blade, it was that serious? Blade and pepper. I still have some. He would cut you and put chili. The person that abused me. You can never amount to anything. Beat me. Every morning, there was a curse, abuse. And he's beating you for nothing. There is nothing you've done, Reverend. This will shock you. When I was about 11, I noticed that my breast was coming out, you know, a little girl. So I went to the person, is a woman, and I said, I have pain here, I don't understand. What does it mean? Because nobody gave me sex education. Hear what she said. Prostitutes! Oh. Prostitutes! Oh my goodness. Reverend, what are you talking about? You and, have started. 
impressed. Are you I'm sure she's impressed. not in jail? It was my father that kept telling me. And You're then when beautiful. I met my husband, and I told him all this, mm. he said, no, it's a lie. I said, mm. it's true. Mm. I don't believe in myself. Mm. I can't stop. And it's my mm. That's one of the reasons why I fight for women. I see now. Now I can see the passion, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. So, did you forgive the person? Did you, did, do they, please it, tell me they are alive. Tell it, me, it, tell me that woman is alive. It took God. Is she alive? Just died. Just died. So she was able to see you in this level. Apologized, but I took care of her thoroughly. In pain, but eventually I got healed. Amen. Because I look at my life, what else do I want God to do for right. me? So why hold someone? Right. She did what she what did. she knew best, and she oh, thought that was good. It wasn't easy. So, so there is now somebody in that same predicament mm -hmm. that's going through that pain and 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 you know rejection and and abuse. What? what are you telling them that it's easy to, to forgive? Was it it's easy? It's not easy to forgive, but if I survived, you can survive. If Joyce Mayer survived, then you can survive. Don't empower the person by remembering and reliving and sitting down there and crying. Take your life in your hand and push it in the past. Forgive the person. It may not be easy, but you have a great life ahead of you. So keep pushing and keep going. Mm. So she's the one who came to beg you for forgiveness and you forgave her? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. It took you a while. First, yes, because I won't lie. Yeah. At first. Like, leave me alone. Yes. Yeah. But later, you know, as yeah. we work with the Holy Spirit. Yes. He helps you. She needed my help. Mm, wow. And I'm not God. Yeah. So I yeah. had to help. And he it, and it tells us to forgive anyway. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. So tell me now, Reverend, fast forward. Now you're married and he's raising you into ministry. And you, how did you now get confident and become a force like you are? Did it take time? How did you grow and, and you know? I got born again 40 years ago. My husband began the ministry 31 years ago and he allowed me to use his platform for rehearsals by giving me opportunities to preach to share, to lead the women's fellowship and all that. And because he's secure enough, he began to push me little by little into my world. Then one day I was going to preach to some students at a university not so far from where I live. And as we parked at the gas station, my driver came out of the car. I just sat in the car ruminating on what I was going to preach. I heard God say to me, you have been faithful in standing by my servants. Now I give you your own. Wow. Just wow. Clear. Just like that. Just clear. Mm. From that moment, God began to give me heavy duty platforms. Right. God began to expose me globally. God made me have contact through my husband with Pastor Matthew Ashimolo in 1992. By 2003, I went to preach for him and I preached a message titled From Lameness to Greatness from Acts chapter three, and I brought five major things that happened to the man that was Adam. He put me on TV, and I began to care citizen, and I began to receive invitations from Germany, from Italy. Who is that woman, who is that? That was how the global ministry started. Was birthed. God used the Ashimalus to put me on KICC TV, and then the world had my voice. Mm. And invitations that I had not even Cope with. You can't keep up there too much. The world. Who is with you? Who is fighting with you? There are battles you are not and cannot handle. I pity people that go to 52 churches in 52 weeks. You don't, you are not planted. You join people to abuse your pastor on the internet. You use your mouth after a bowl of spaghetti to talk against men of God. I pity you tomorrow. I really do. Because days are coming when battles will come. This is it shook? Because Naomi was with her. And the Bible says, Naomi said, you need to go start gleaning now. 
so that you can eat. Can I have a box of tissue paper? Box of tissue paper. Thank you, sir. Can I have a lady? Can a lady come? Come with me either from there. Okay. Come. Can you pitch with me? So she gets to the field of Boaz. And Boaz's people, according to the book of Exodus, Numbers, you are a rich person. When you plant and you harvest, you must never take everything out of your field. You must leave some for widows, for the fatherless, for orphans, and all that. So she gets on this field, kneel down on your fore, and begin to pick. She began to pick. You can remove your slippers. And she began to pick. But while she was speaking, she was saying to herself, this is just. It may be inconvenient. I'm going to be faithful. It does not matter. It is just. Don't laugh at me yet because you may be laughing too soon. Don't judge me yet because you may be laughing and judging me too soon. I may not be driving the car you are driving yet. At least I'm driving my feet. And it is just my beginning. I may not look like what I should be now. I have composed several songs and I am not like Sinash. I have many messages but nobody's listening to me. I have read and read. I have five master's degree. I really want to work at the embassy but it appears as if this little one that I have is just my beginning. She remained faithful. She ate and took some for her mother-in-law. Then see what happened. One day Boaz comes in and sees this lady picking after the men. Picking after the men. And please don't miss this. Boaz says, whose damsel is this? Excuse me. This woman was married for 10 years. You call her a damsel? Did you just call her a damsel? Married for 10 years. Used. This one is not a regulated sex. If you are married, anytime. Used. Her breasts had become floppy. In her bid to get a baby, doctors had opened her up several times. People had abused her. She was not supposed to be someone you look at and call a damsel. Do you know the meaning of a damsel? Boaz shows up and Boaz says, who's damsel? Listen. When God favors you, he repackages you. My husband defined favor to mean to be served first, even though it won't go around. They know that this thing cannot reach everybody, but they look for you. I call favor the impartial partiality of God. Are there no people that sing more than Sinatch? Are there no better preachers than Kathy and Funke? What of us were discussing yesterday, I said to her, First, Psalm, first Chronicles chapter 1, verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how not many nobles. How did I get here? I used to hawk to pay school fees. Who's dancer? I'm here today to tell you that God said 
in this house, and God gave me one scripture for you. I'll read it when I'm closing. In this house, and all of you that are at this convention, from this point that I'm declaring it, there shall be glorious compensations. Wow. And that's all the time we had for today. I know you are blessed beyond. You can't even place it anywhere. This is amazing. Next week, we continue with the same amazing woman, same channel, same time. This is Woman Without Limits. See you here next week. Without limits. Woman, woman, woman.